Well, it looks like Monday Night Raw trying to be another terrible show tonight. Another terrible, terrible, terrible show. Another terrible show. Unbelievable, isn't it? The name of my topic tonight is called... Crap in Columbia, South Carolina. Is WWE getting better or worse? So much I have to say. But first, I'm going to open up the show with a little bit of something tonight. I'm going to open up the show with uh, this moment that happened uh, 10 years ago today. On a uh, Monday Night Raw. It's um from it's the day from uh, um October eighteenth, nineteen eight two two thousand four. The day when uh the debate for Taboo Tuesday between Shawn Michaels, Chris Benoit, and Edge. So sit back, right back. Here it is. It's a great de big debate between Chris Benoit and Shawn Michaels, Triple Don't. H and Shawn Michaels, Chris Benoit and Edge. Triple Threat debate before Taboo Tuesday. Date was October 18, 2004, 10, 20 years ago today. Here it is. Open up the show. Tuesday. 
now see Shawn Michaels and Chris Benoit. They've had their chances, their opportunities at the world title. But I haven't. I have waited my entire career for a championship match. And the fact that I haven't had one is a crime. But it's a crime that can be rectified at Taboo Tuesday. And I deserve it. I am the youngest. I am the hungriest. And I proved it with my actions last week. It feels easy. And I promise, I promise, I guarantee that if I face Triple H, I will win the world title. It feels very strong. He's the, he's the man that should beat your vote. He deserves it. He thinks he deserves it. Uh, same question. You want to talk about your actions last week? Well, I haven't forgotten about your actions last week. And you're going to find out I haven't forgotten about your actions last week in our match tonight. That's for why the fans should vote for me to face Triple H at Taboo Tuesday. Since I've been back on Raw, I've not lost a match to Triple H. In fact, I've made both Shawn Michaels and Triple H tap out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, that's great. Hey, you've never made me tap out. Chip, gentlemen. Well, you want me to make you tap Chip, out right now? Please, uh -oh. please stick to the format of the debate. Please, gentlemen. Please stick to the format of the debate. Got to get out of hand, JR. Chris, you, st you still have time to, to finish answering the question. I beat Triple H for the World Heavyweight title before, and I'll do it again. Shawn Michaels, your question. Well, I think it's obvious to everybody here in Chicago.
Yeah. That was 20 years ago today. Yep. Well, let's get started with tonight's show. And, uh, maybe my topic tonight is called. Crazy. It's called, uh, It's called Crazy and Crap. It's called wait, Crap in Columbia, South Carolina. Is WWE getting better or worse? So much should I say? Let's get started tonight. Hold on a second. Know that a little beeping sound in the paper sound, ignore that every time. WWE um, kicks off with the Crown Jewel World Championship being entered into the arena by our security. You see clips of, of last week's show involving Roman Reigns, Jimmy Uso fighting the bloodline. You see clips from a while with Jimmy trying to convince Jay to join him, but Jay refusing. Then we see the um, bloodline Jay Uso. Bloodline come to the ring in loud chance of OTC from the fans. Solo and not tells the fans to acknowledge him, but they boo. Loud solo sucks chant, and solo tells them they are looking at the future, at the present, and the future. Because they are looking, he says they are looking at the bloodline and the tribal chief. Solo says he is the man who created a bigger and stronger family. He created a bigger, a bigger. Big T Tiger, whatever it says, and stronger bloodline. He says Roman and Jimmy can't do anything about it. He says even Jay doesn't want anything to do with them. Fans chant Yee, and he tells them no Yee. He says they beat down Roman. The beatdowns on Roman will continue unless they come down the ring by the end of the night and, and acknowledges him. Jay music hits and he shows up between the fans. He walks down the steps. And gets into the ring. Jay doesn't forgive Jimmy at all. He doesn't know what he needs to get in his good graces. Jay looks at Solo for Solo and tells him he has a minute. He tells him he he promises not to be here to fight because he still cares about him and he's 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 his little brother bro, his little brother. Jay tells him that Jimmy and Roman are not here yet. He come came out to talk to him one on one. He has all to think about what he is doing to the family and the bloodline. He says that no one has bigger issues with Roman than he does, but dividing the family is not it. He left down to be his own man. He became any kind of champion. Jay tells him that fighting over the little fall is not it. That it's earned, not taken, and Solo knows better. But if he wants to end Roman's power to do but it but not to divide the family while he does it. Solo asks him if he's done wasting his wasting time. Solo says he's not trying to divide the family. He is trying to unite the family, but family. 
tells Jay to stop calling him his little brother. If he is his tribal chief now, and he will always have a place for his bloodline. All he has to do is acknowledge him. Jay doesn't want to follow Jimmy's footsteps, but because look where he got him. He asks Jay if he is in or out. Jay tells Solo if he is trying to unite the bloodline, why did he have to go to get Tama Tonga? Leo Tonga Tonga Leo Jacob Jay says there is a reason they escape the reason why they, they stay away from Jacob and if Jacob keeps looking at him he will not his ass out Jacob gets in Jay's face but Solo stops him Jay says next time he says Solo it will be different he tells him yeet and throws the microphone leaving it the ring And we'll see this next in the triple threat match. Triple threat tag team qualifying match Street Profits with B Fab versus Pretty Deadly versus DIY. Ford, Prince, Ciampa start the match in the ring. Ciampa with a knee onto Ford and Ford to the, uh, to the outside. Prince slants Ciampa and runs out of the ring. Ciampa chases, Prince, Ciampa chases Prince on the outside and Wilson shoulder tackles Ciampa. All six men get involved, and it ends pretty deadly, double teaming champ in the ring. Back from commercial four with a super kick onto pretty deadly. He climbs to the top rope, but Prince trips him up, and Wilson is tagged in. Pretty deadly climbs to the second rope, but Dawkins throws Wilson to the outside. Dawkins lifts Wilson up on his on the, on his shoulder, and four. With the Doomsday Blockbuster, Ciampa goes for the cover on, on Wilson and four onto Prince, and referee counts to three. DIY, the referee tells the ring announcer that Wilson was the lead competitor, and DIY are the winners. Back from commercial, we see Roman Reigns and Jimmy Uso step out of an SUV entering the arena. They bump into Jay Uso, who is a fake, who is face to face with Roman. Jay begins to walk away, but Roman grabs him and tells Jay that he is proud of him. They all are. Jay tells him, no ye, and walks away. Roman tells Jimmy, I told you, and walks away. There's no way that Jim, Jay will ever forgive Jimmy. Never. He'll never get in his good good graces. Never. Jimmy will never, forget it, Jimmy. Jay will never get back in your good graces after you stabbed him in the back not too long ago. We cut to Nick Aldis and Nia Jax. She is talking on the phone with Tiffany Stratton and she mentions that Tiffany has the flu and their tag team match is canceled. Nick tells her that the match is not canceled. Smackdown has a deeper ta talent and for, had, and for her to find someone else in comes Candice LeRae. Aldous makes the match and Ray will be Nia's tag team partner.
Oh, second. Come back. Then we see this next match Piper Niven with Chelsea Union versus Lash Legend with Jakaro Jackson. The bell rings and runs away. A shoulder tackle by Niven takes Jack, uh, takes Jack, takes Jack down, Jack down. She takes Jack down, down. I mean Jackson down. Sorry. Niven goes for a splash, but Legend moves out of the way. Legend with a, with a kick to the face, followed by a splash. Legend goes for a cover, but Niven kicks out. Legend runs toward Niven, but Niven picks her up and slams her. She goes for the cover, but Legend kicks out. Niven goes for a cannonball into the corner, but Legend moves out of the way. Legend lifts Niven up on her shoulders, but Niven lands on her feet. Niven runs to the ropes, but Legend body slams her. Chelsea gets on, on the ring apron and distracts Legend. Jackson throws Chelsea into the barricade. Niven goes for a splash, but Legend moves out of the way. Legend lifts Niven up, lifts Niven up and slams her face first onto the mat. She goes for a cover and gets the pin. Winner, Lash Legend. Back from the commercial, Roman Reigns is sitting in his sitting in his office, and Jimmy is next to him. He tells Roman he should talk to Jay, and Roman tells him if the wise man was here right now, this would not be solved. He says he gave Jimmy a shot, and he tried to try, but it's, it is the time. It is time to do it his way, and he will fix it tonight. The way well, Jimmy asked him how he was going going to do it, and Roman says he's going to acknowledge Solo. Cody Rhodes music hits, and, and out he comes to the ring. The Crown Jewel Championship is placed in the ring as Cody makes his entrance. Cody looks at the Crown Jewel Championship and he says it's about who is going to be the first one. Many of what many what ifs in history of the sport. What if the NWA World's Champion Harley Race faced the WWF slash WWE Bruno Champion Bruno San Martino? What if the AWA's Brock Winkle faced off against Ric Flair? What if WCW's Bill Goldberg faced off against WWE's Stone Cold Steve Austin? He says at Crown Jewel there will be a definitive Crown Jewel champion. He says Gunther can chop down a tree. 
chop a tree down with his hand and most of the men are terrified of Gunther but he isn't and even if he w was he wouldn't bet against himself he says to look at that float is one of the most beautiful designed title belts in history of the sport but beauty is skin deep over the last two years he over the last two years he and he he the last two years he and the fans would have gotten to know each other when he came back he wanted to take John John Cena's schedule but they and they take they take it and add it to it but it's almost skin deep the real reason he thinks he's leaving crown jewel as champion sitting as champion sitting home right now Cody says she's about three feet tall and he needs to know when is when his bones turn to dust his name will be attached to the title as, as first champion his name will be named as is given the same and his name is and his name is the same name given to her and you and to play the game not to lose but to play to win He's, he says he would like to invite Gunther to Smackdown next Friday to stand in the ring with him and he will he will look he will look to he will look to him in the eyes and ask him what he wants to talk about he drops the microphone his music plays and Cody looks to the, at the crowd Kevin Owens and Randy Orton Kevin Owens and Randy Orton and Nick Aldis second a pre-recorded video of all the, of Kevin Owens airs. He says he's been in WWE for over 10 years, and it's ridiculous that he was told to stay home because he got attacked and attacked by the Golden Boy outside of his bus. It makes him ask himself how he appreciate it. He is he is by the company. He says he can't get over the, what Randy Orton did to him. Owens says he will never. Would have turned his back on Orton, and you cannot believe he would pick Cody over you. You pick Cody Rose over him. Oh, so that's why he did what he did. Oh, oh, that's why. Oh, that's why he attacked Cody. He attacked Cody Rhodes. So I was wrong. I thought he thought that the reason why he attacked Cody that um Kevin Owens attacked Cody Rhodes on um, Cody was because he picked Roman Reigns to be his tag team partner, Bad Blood, but. Hold on a second. Yeah, as I was as I was saying, um, yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I thought he turned. Hold on one second.
Hey, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, you post, yeah, uh, I thought, uh, so that's, uh, yeah, I thought he, uh, yeah, uh, so that's, uh, he, yeah, I thought he, um, um, all this time, um, he, that Roman attacked, um, that, that um, Kevin Owens attacked, um, Cody, because he, because he picked Roman to be his tag team partner at Bad Blood, but, but, um, I was wrong, he attacked Cody because he picked Orton, not him. And I was wrong. And Owen says, with everything happening to him right now, he doesn't know if or when he can come back to WWE. Yeah, dude, yeah, Nick Old, yeah, Nick Aldis suspended him for for like for find him for doing his actions against Randy Orton. I think that's a little stupid kind of stupid move by Nick Aldis, don't you think? I think that was a good call. Who knows when he would come back? We cut to Nick Aldis and he comes in and, and, come, and in comes Orton. He tells Aldis he needs to get his hands on Owens and he is going to do it at Crown Jewel. Aldis says he is sorry and it's not something he can do right now. It's not that he won't, he can't. Orton says he is not asking for permission. Aldis tells him he is saying he can do it because it is come is from up above. Okay, eleven fifty seven right now. Up from above. Orton tells him that he Up from above. Orton tells him that he knows who he is he needs to talk to and he walks away. Triple Threat Tag Team Match, A-Town Down Under versus Los Garza versus um, Motor City Machine Guns. The bell rings and we're underway. Garza um, and Waller go after Chris Saban, but Saban with elbows to the face. A cross body off the top rope onto both men. Saving with a tornado DDT onto Waller, and both men fall to the outside. Ali, I can't believe it. The Motor City Machine Games are making their WWE debut. Wow. Al Shelley is tagged in for a double baseball slide onto Waller and Garza. The two guys, yeah, the two guys from Impact Wrestling, Motor City Machine Game, make their WWE debut. Impact Wrestling, TNA Impact. Man from Det um, Detroit. Yeah, Alex Shelley's tagged in to a double baseball slide onto Wall and Garza. Humberto Theory get in the ring and they're thrown into to the outside of the ring. Motor City Machine Guns, double team Waller. Alex with an arm onto arm bar onto Waller. He runs to the ropes, but Waller with a, with a right hand. Back from commercial with a clothesline to Garza on the outside of the ring. Waller runs to runs. Waller, Waller runs and rolls onto the to ring, but Alex hits him with a with a kick. He grabs A Town down under and hits them with a double D E T. Garza grabs Alex, but Alex grabs Alex, but Alex with a jawbreaker. All six men fight in the ring, but in theory is tagged in. He hits Garza with a drop kick onto drop kick and he drops Humberto neck first onto onto his knee. Alex with a um atomic drop a drop and saving with a clothesline. Alex is tagged in and is a splash onto a onto a neck breaker. Alex goes for the cover and gets the pin. Winners are the motor motor city machine guns. Byron is backstage with Andrade and Carmella Hayes. Both men begin to fight and break fight and W officials break it up. Hunter gets involved and he tells Carmella to leave. 
Now we see his next tag team match. Night. Oh boy, okay, it's 12. Wow. It's 12 o'clock in the morning right now. Just hit midnight. Nia Jackson, Candice LeRae with Andy Hartwell versus Bailey and Naomi. The bell rings and we're underway. Nia with right hands and she slams Bailey into the corner. Candice is tagged in, but Bailey with the forearm onto Candice. I snap Mary and Naomi is tagged in and, and, and tagged in and she goes for the cover. But Candice is tagged in. Naomi runs toward Candice, but Candice trips her and Nia is tagged back in. Naomi with her right hand, but Nia throws her away. She goes for the cover, but Naomi is kicked out. She throws Naomi into the ropes and lands a spine buster. A spine buster. The same time by Nia, she goes for the cover, but Naomi kicks out. Then we we'll go to a little commercial break. Back from commercial, Bailey and Lorraine in the ring. Bailey with a sunset flip and. Flip and Lorraine hits a turn, hits the turnbuckle. Bailey goes for a cover, but Nia breaks it up. A kick by Naomi onto Nia, and she slams Nia head first onto the mat. Nia falls to the outside. Naomi with a suicide dive onto Nia onto the outside of the ring. Bailey runs towards Candice, who is on on the, on the outside of, outside, but Candice with with the right hand. She gets on the ring apron, but tr Bailey trips her up and throws her into the ring. Candice distracts the referee and Andy Hartwell throws Bailey into the ring post. Candice with a moonsault off the second rope. She goes for cover and gets a pin. Winners Nia Jackson, Candice LeRae. This is terrible. Nia gets gets in the ring but confused but cel gets in the ring confused but celebrates. Terrible. Ryan Saxon is backstage with Nick Aldis. He says next week is Carmelo Hayes against Andrade, and LA Knight will be a special guest referee. And in comes LA Knight. He says that next week you might think you, um, just, you are signing up for the match for the United States title, but to set up the victory factory reset. Oh wait, one thing I gotta say. You know what? I don't think you know I don't think Tiffany Strat Stratton is sick. I think she's what she's trying to do is she's trying to fool pull the wool over everyone's eyes so she can. Um, tr um, pull the wool over one's eye so she can cash in on Nia Jax and ca cash in on Money Bank briefcase, cash in and just become the new SmackDown Women's Champion. I don't think she's sick. She's faking. This is just an act. She, I think she's yeah. She's pulling rules. I know she's not. She's not really sick. I know it. Rowan's music hits and he and out he comes to the, to the ring. Roman and Soul Silk in the bloodline. Back from the commercial, Roman. Ro uh, back from the commercial, Roman. Back from the commercial, Roman Reigns is in the ring. The fans chants OTC. He tells the fans maybe for for maybe for the last time to acknowledge him. Solo. Solo's Solo's music hits and out he comes. He goes, he gets in, so gets in the ring, and Roman tells him that earlier tonight Solo told Jay that uh, that their family is stronger now. He told Jay that that the bloodline was stronger now. Roman says he doesn't see it. He doesn't see anything that tell that, that tells him that they're better off now. Anything they are divided and broken after they after everything they went through in the spring, everything they lost through the, the summer, and they stand they're divided. Roman tells Solo that if he told his father that he, that he could fix this, all he wants to do is um, put them back in the promised land. He wants to, wants tiles around their waist, pay paydays coming from the heavens. He wants 
evidence. He wants their family to, to be priority. He asks Solo what he can do to fix the fix the um those. Solo laughs and said and says all he has to do is acknowledge him. Roman thinks about it and the fans chant OTC. Roman looks at Solo and he says he acknowledges him. He asks Solo if if, if he makes him feel better and Solo says no. He tells Roman that it's not good enough. He needs him to acknowledge him as tribal chief. Roman looks at Solo and the fans chant no. Solo tells him he needs him to acknowledge him as tribal chief or else. Roman looks at Solo and yells or else what? Solo says he knew it. Roman has never changed. He always wanted the Ula Fala and since Roman had never changed, he would never change either. Solo snaps his finger and out comes come the bloodline holding Jimmy Uso. Solo goes for the right hand, but Roman with the right hands, you throw a solo to the outside. Outside. In comes in come the bloodline and knocks them down. Roman with a clothesline to Jimmy Jacob Fatu. Solo gets into the ring and he is hit with a Superman punch. Roman grabs the wheel of Fala as as he is about to wear it. Solo hits him with a low blow. The bloodline stomp on Roman and beat him up in the ring. Jacob fought two with a jumping DDT. Solo hits Roman with a Samoan spike. He grabs Roman and hits him with another Samoan spike. The bloodline stand tall, stay in the ring, and SmackDown goes off the air. Pure garbage, man. That was pure garbage. Now, can WWE get better or worse? Hell no. They're not getting going to get any better. Cause, 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 um, I don't know why in the world this tip was, uh, was, was, um, Kevin Owens, um, was not going to be coming, it's not going to be on WWE television. We got, um, Tiffany Stratton, um, 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 um now on both shows, Ron Smackdown, Money Bunk Contract, which is stupid. I don't know what's going on with the future for the WWE. I mean, it's not going to get any better. I mean, we all know that Triple H is not going to do tribute to the troops because it gives you, um, because I, I mean, no disrespect, Saturday Night Main Event is a good show, but, um, but if he cancels um, tribute to the troops this December, shame on him because it shows total disrespect to the men and women who fought for our country. People in Vietnam, people in Iraq, the veterans. I mean, ever since the terrorists attacked our country, nine terrorists attack our country, nine um country um attacked the World Trade Center, New York City. It shows you how terrible. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, why in the world, if Triple H cancels something that his father-in-law Vince McMahon created, um, tribute to troops, then he should be ashamed of himself. I don't know why tribute um um tribute to troops was not on the scheduling card. I mean, it said SmackDown looked very terrible last night. Garbage. I mean, I mean, about tribute. If tribute, if W, if I mean, I never said it. It, it, it was not on 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 the listing card on the schedule card. I mean, it, it's a it's a tradition for 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 the men and women who fought the country. It, it, it been aired on Christmas Eve most of the time throughout these years. If he, I mean, I never heard some of the Harry Triple H saying that, um, that, that tribute tr troops would be canceled. I mean, or something like that. It was something that Mr. Man, his father in law, Mr. Man created tribute to troops. If they can't, if, if Triple H can, um, doesn't air tribute, cancels tribute, um, doesn't um, mention tribute troops and cancels it, shame on him. I mean, I mean, this bloodline and the, and the blood, this bloodline storyline needs, on um, SmackDown needs to, this is just, you just stop. It needs to end right now. I mean, Jim, Jimmy, J, Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy. I mean, Jay will, won't forgive his brother Jimmy. I mean, this just, just, just ter absolutely terrible. What's a good thing? That I feel like the money, Motor City Machine Guns will get get buried in WWE since they're now from uh. Now on Impact, Impact, um, they're from Impact Wrestling.
I think Triple H, Triple H probably hates Impact. Um, I think Triple H might um might try to get these two men buried. Cause I think W, I think them signing with WWE is a big mistake. Big mistake, cause they'll they'll get buried by some 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 of these um tag teams. Completely. So that's all I do for all of you. So um. Now you know what it's time for. It's time for something I like to do. It's time for. It's time for Justin's Timeline History of all the wrestling birthdays, sports, pop culture, etc., etc., everything. All you hear that little thing, the Back to the Future thing starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, one of my favorite movies of all time. The best, the all time best, my favorite. Let's get down to business. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's go to um, October 17th. Okay, see, October 17th was a happy 36th birthday to Kaylee Turner. She's the sister of former WWE wrestler, uh, what's her name? Uh, Alicia Fox. She's the younger sister of Alicia Fox. Let's see, uh, October 17th was a happy birthday to Steve, football player Steve Mar Michael Mc Steve Mongo McDonald Steve Mongo McMichael. Um, uh, he was a fan. He was at WrestleMania 11, 1995, and he was a commentator on WCW Nitro. He's the ex-husband uh, of Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's ex-wife Deborah. I will. Uh, Okay, let's see, October 17th, uh, let's 
see what else. Okay, 1974, a movie called, family movie called Benji was released in theaters. Let's see what else. See, October 17th, 1994, Monday Night Raw, um, Bob Beckling is interviewed by Vince McMahon discussing his actions against um, his former protege, Arnold Scolan. And Lex Luger wants to challenge, comes out and challenges him, wants to challenge him into a match. And, uh... See Monday Night Football. Okay, October 17th, 1994, on ABC's Monday Night Football. Kansas City Chiefs beat the Denver Marcos 31 to 28. See what else I'm trying to say. Okay, 1974, October 17th, 1974, see, Oakland A's defeated, the, uh, Oakland A's um, defeated, um, Feed the um, Oakland A's to feed the feed the uh, Oakland A's to feed the um, LA Dodgers three to two.
That's right. Okay, uh, let's see what else. 19, let's see. See 2004, Sunday Night Um, Shelton Benjamin defeated um, Stephen Richards. Tajiri defeated Chuck Palumbo. Nia and Victoria defeated Gail Kim and Molly Holly. Okay, 2014 on SmackDown. Okay, Seth Rollins defeated uh, Dolph Ziggler. AJ Lee defeated AJ Lee. AJ Lee defeated Layla. Sheamus and the Usos defeated Goldust. Stardust and The Miz. Nikki Bell defeated Naomi. And Dean Ambrose defeated Kane. And movie movies released in theaters nationwide to, um, to 2014. Okay, a movie called uh. The Book of Life featuring the voices of Diego, Diego Luis, Dolly Sanada, and Chan Tatum and was released in theaters. Also featuring voices of Christina Applegate, Ice Cube, Ron Perlman, Hector Elizondo as well. Uh, Camp X-Ray. Starring uh, Kristen Stewart. Um, payment more more that payment. I don't know how to pronounce that. Payment my my die was released. And documentary star, um, called the Cesar Black Ho Black Hollywood. It was at least a little documentary. And Dear White People starring uh, Tessa Thompson. And Tyler James Burroughs from that show. I, I never liked um, Everybody Hates Christmas Release. I never liked that show.
and Fury, uh, Fury starring Brad Pitt, Shia LaBeouf, Logan Lerman, Michael Pena was released. Also starring Scott Eastwood, Eastwood, Clint Eastwood's son. Listen Up Phillips starring Jason Schwartzman, Elizabeth Moss, Christian Ritter was released. Cuny is starring Ciara Hanna and Emily O'Brien. See, uh, a young one starring Nicholas Hall, Ella Fanning, Michael, and Michael Shannon was released. And another movie was released, um, one, a very good movie here Birdman or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance, starring Michael Keaton, Zach. Galifunkis, Edward Norton, and Emma Stone and Naomi Watts was released. Very good movie. Got a lot of Oscar nominations. Really good movie. Now let's go to yesterday's October the 18th. Yesterday was a happy Yesterday was a happy 55th um is a happy 55th on a second Yesterday was a happy 66th birthday, 65th birthday to Jim Norberry, known as the Viking, I mean, as the, as the Berserker. Huss, huss, huss. Simon Gertz, Gertz turned four, uh, 42 yesterday. Let's see and, and uh, see what else. Okay, a couple of movies were released in theaters on uh, yesterday. Movies were released in theaters um, October the 18th. A movie called It's Alive. Um, a horror movie called It's Alive. Starring uh, It's a live starring uh, John P. Ryan and Sharon Farrell. In the crazy world of Julius Ruder starring Tiffany Bottoms. Tiffany Bottoms, and uh, yeah, Stephen Stein. Tiffany Bottoms was released. Yeah, 
Yeah, the uh the crazy world, Julius Vu um Vooter. Yeah. And a movie called The Odessa Fire starring John Voight was released. Really good movie. See what else? Um, let's see. Uh, two thousand four, two thousand four, two thousand four. Uh, Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Um. Wait. Hold on. Wait. Nineteen ninety four. ECW. Crispin Wilde defeated Ray Ray Austin and Sabu defeat Kick Cactus Shack. Someone else. Okay, 2004 Monday Night Raw was just put um day night just put um out before uh Taboo Tuesday. We see Shawn Michaels. You know, I mentioned earlier Shawn Michaels and uh Edge have Edge and Chris Wilde have to wait before Taboo Tuesday. And um Carmella. Carmella and uh, Christy Hammond confront each other before Tabby Tuesday, and Lita um, gets um, intimidated by uh, Gene Snitsky before Tabby Tuesday, and uh, Evolution. Let's see, uh, hold on, let's see, main event. Triple Threat, Chris Benoit versus Shawn Michaels versus Edge. And uh the match had uh um Edge defeated him defeated, defeated um both of them um both uh Chris Benoit and Shawn Michaels and Triple H was on commentary looking down at Edge and Chris Benoit Shawn Michaels um for te um Taboo Tuesday. The show ends. And let's see. See, trying to see, see, two, see, and uh, see, 
Let's see. Okay, Monday Night Football. Um, the temp, um, the St. Louis Rams defeat the Tampa Buccaneers 28-21 on ABC's Monday Night Football, and that's it. That's it for all of you, um, um my Godfather soldiers and sons. That's my little pop culture, all the rest of the history and all the birthdays got all covered. Now I'm gonna close out with some, um, something with all of you. I'm gonna close out the song, the thing, the thing from uh, SmackDown from 2004. The name of the song is called "Rise Up" by Drowning Pool. I don't know all of you wrestling fans remember that song, "Rise Up" by Drowning Pool. Close out that show tonight. This is midnight. So um, help all of you have a good midnight. Gonna get me some sleep. So um. Hope all of you have a good night. What does the king a good like? midnight mean? And um take care of yourselves. God bless all of you. And um have a good midnight. I'm out of here. Peace. And here is something to close out the show with tonight this midnight. Rise up by Drowning Pool from the the original SmackDown thing from two thousand four. Here goes. Close out the show. Good night. Yeah. Uh.